Pat Aylward, you were a rugby man in your time. I was, yeah. Um, it was my first introduction to Westport here in 1988. I arrived in Westport not knowing anyone. And I used the auspices of the Westport Rugby Club to get to know and build up a, a lot of very good friendships in Westport at the time. Mm. Yeah. And how did you start? An unusual story. Um, I was living in Castlebar initially. I rented a house in Castlebar. I knew no one in Mayo, in fact, really. And on St. Stephen's Day, I think it was, 1988, I sat in the car and uh, drove out to uh, the club house down in Carahalli, knowing that there would be a match of presidents versus uh, first team, as there is in every club in the country. And walked in the door there, my first ever time in there. I didn't actually even know the Westport uh, Rugby Club colours, believe it or not. And walked in, I remember it well, and walked in, had a few drinks that night and ended up a, a few weeks later playing for Westport. Yeah. And had you played rugby before that? A bit, a certain amount. Uh, rowing was my sport, which is mm. quite fashionable at the moment with the Olympics and all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I had given up rowing at about the age of 25 and then I took up uh, rugby fairly seriously after that and had reasonable success in, in Leinster. I got into a Provincial Towns Cup final uh, with the Curra against Kilkenny and uh, uh, beaten by Willie Duggan and Ned Byrne, who were played against them, all right? Yeah, no, no, no. And uh, they came down here then and then used rugby to actually sort of uh, get, it was my stepping stone into the town really, to be honest, yeah. And who were the guys you met when you came here first? Oh, very, very like, if we're trying to re recount the first team at the time. Uh, there would have been Christy Cawley and uh, uh, Johnny McCormack. Uh, uh, let me see all the various different characters. That, well, all the Cawleys were there at the time. Uh, Tom Kane, uh, a young Stanley Burke. All right, and who? Oh, gee, that, I think of the other ones now. It's hard to it's hard to think of the, the various different ones mm. uh, at the time. Yeah. And you got involved in administration then after career. Yeah, I, I, I. Played rugby for a good few years and then got injured. I thought I'd play forever, to be honest, uh, because uh, rowing being a non-contact sport, my body, I thought, was in great nick, but I didn't realise I put up quite huge mileage on the roads uh, running uh, for part of the rowing. People don't realise that oarsmen have to keep their body weight down, so they do huge mileage uh, in order, because we do heavy weights, which would encourage you to, to bulk up your body but that's no good when you have to pull it over the water mm. so we did huge mileage and eventually that actually played up on me I started getting problems with my feet and my knees or whatever mm. so I ended up having to uh, finish up playing rugby and I became secretary of uh, Westport Rugby Club oh I think let me see I came back from Lebanon in 93 so 94 to 98 or so mm. I became secretary of uh, Westport Rugby Club. And then I went on for two years. I think it's 98 to 2000. I was president of uh, Westport Rugby Club. Okay. Did you have any success in your playing career with Westport? I'm not minor successes, you know. Um, one of my first matches here uh, for Westport at the time, uh, there was a local derby match uh, for where Westport played Ballina. And it, was, it had huge consequences because uh, Westport generally uh, with the Galwegians and Corinthians dominating the senior league at the time. Uh, th this was probably the, the only winnable match they had uh, per, per year. So uh, the first year I played, we managed to uh, beat Ballina. I think it was the first time in about 10 years that Westport had beaten Ballina in the senior league. So mm. an eventful day. Yeah. Good yeah. day, yeah. And what were the facilities like in the club at the time when you were down there? Oh, well, the, the new uh, pitches had been developed and I, I was quietly surprised how good they were to be honest uh, mm. you know two excellent pitches and, and modern at the time clubhouse and, and dressing rooms etc I remember uh, a few years previously having gone out to uh, not with Westport and um, had gone to Connemara to play the Connemara Old uh, 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 and was astounded like to with, back at Griffin's pub a full bath and that was it and mm -hmm. you were changing in, in, in the open air and you, you you dipped yourself down in a in a very cold bath or whatever to actually uh, to wash off the mud for, from from that field in the near the centre of the town. Yeah. And did you train much on them days there? I, I personally would have trained an awful lot. I would have been through the rowing. I kept up that that level of training quite a bit. I would have been, and I, you might have heard the four girls who uh, who spoke uh, who won the the bronze. Uh, they they said they were aerobically fit. Now I would have been extremely aerobically fit. Uh, I've 
blessed with very good lungs so I am one of these people who could keep going forever uh, with regard to I would have huge stamina and rowing being a stamina sport uh, that would uh, uh, you know play well for me and, and, and it was good for me yeah and who did you row with I rode with UCG primarily and then with uh, tribesmen in Galway and then in Neptune in Dublin uh, and uh, gosh uh, I was there in in the early stages now UCG went on to win and Hen we used to the big the culmination of uh, UCG's year we used to go to Henley every year it's actually on this week and the two the, the O'Donovan and his partner are will be rowing in Henley this week you'll see it but uh, uh, Henley is the is the Wimbledon of rowing and mm -hmm. uh, so we actually did quite good our year uh, we were beaten by the uh, the eventual winners uh, Yale uh, in a in a, a quarter final, it, it's two boats against two. Uh, it's 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 not like the Olympic racing where there's six lanes. It, it's it's two boats racing one another up the Thames, and we did very well our year. And uh, UCG went on a few years later to actually win it. And it's it was called at the time the Ladies Plate, and uh, it was eff effectively the World University Championships, basically. De mm. de facto World University Championships, because all, all the universities of the world used to used to turn up for it. And how many crew did you have? It was eight. Level? I eight. was mainly in eights. In eight. Yeah, mm. in eights. So I won an Irish Championship in fours, Cox, four, Cox fours. The eights mm. are Coxed as well. And I think that was in 1980, I, I won an Irish Championship in fours down mm. in Inishkara in, uh, in Cork. And... Uh, yeah, no, I, I really love drawing and I, I must say at the time it was a much very minority sport and it's absolutely fabulous to see the guys in the last few years bring the sport to television in Ireland and make people appreciate, uh, you know, what a good sport it is. It, it, it's a fabulous sport and uh, I'm absolutely delighted with the successes in the last two Olympics. And what was the, the, the training programme like for rowing that time? Oh, well, it, 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 it was fairly tough now. There would have been no other sport in the country, I think, bar cycling, that would do the amount of training we did. Mm. Uh, you train uh, twice a day at weekends. Uh, you get one day off, generally a Monday, and you train uh, then uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you train twice on a Saturday and twice on a Sunday. You know? oh, would that be on a boat or in a gym? Yeah, the or... boat, uh, the, the, at weekends uh, in the winter, uh, it, it would be in a boat mm -hmm. and it would be gym work uh, yeah, the midweek stuff uh, would be gym work in the winter uh, but that in, in the summer it, it would uh, you know be all on the boat mm -hmm. and you'd lose you know you'd build up a bulk uh, of weights uh, weight body weight o over the winter and you'd go down to skin and bone you'd be racing in, in very hot temperatures or whatever even you know and you'd go down to basically skin and bone it, it, by the end of the racing season at, at the end of July mm -hmm. yeah and it's been tall an advantage in rowing. Huge advantage, yeah. I, I used to go on my holidays for about six years. I went to the world championships all around, mm. all over the place in various different parts of the world. Mm. Because some, a lot of my friends were actually competing for Ireland mm. at, at those. And I distinctly remember the likes of Lucerne in Switzerland or in Munich or whatever. You'd be going to a regatta, you know, and all the other athletes would be on the train with you, you know. Mm. And now I'm, I, I'm six foot four. But there'd be all these guys way taller than me uh, on the public transport heading towards the regatta. It was just it's a, it was a tall man sport. Uh, now they introduced a thing called lightweight, which is sort of it, it allows for people of, of a smaller stature to actually uh, compete in their own categories. Mm. But if you by the laws of physics, an oar is is you know the longer reach you have, the longer legs you have because your seat moves. It gives you a distinct advantage if you have long arms and long legs. Mm. Yeah. There's a great success in Ireland in, in rowing at the moment. What, what's it down to? Down to a fellow called Dominic Casey and Skipper <laughs> Simple as that. Yes, simple as that. One man. Um, what's he got? He's got a drive. He's technical ability. He's got a drive. And he created a club down in Skipperine where the level of competition among themselves, every day they get into a boat, they're actually racing one another and mm. they're pushing one another and the whole lot. And he had the right technique and the right everything. He's, he's in the background with all those crews at the moment, still there. Uh, I think he started Skipperine uh, Rowing Club in 1972. They they didn't feature at all in my time. Uh, like they didn't win anything. They they were I think they were underage and that sort of era. But uh, they're just totally dominant. I must say, take my hat off them. If, you know, some uh, at some stage when he's finished and he, and he's a lot more to achieve. Uh, they'll uh, they'll be a statue, and he 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 deserves a huge lot of credit. Mm. Yeah. So what do you think of rugby nowadays, the, the way they play it? 
Actually, the uh, the lines are on tour at the minute. What the lines, and you see, I don't know whether you can see it, but I'm wearing yeah, the lines t-shirts. That's, that's the reminded moment. me, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's fairly bash bash and brutal game at the moment. Mm. It's it's sad that uh, it's become such a physical game, you know. Mm. And uh, uh, I don't know how what they're going to do with regard to uh, you know trying to reduce down the the physical size of, of, of the players mm. and stopping this bash 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 up the middle mm. and whatever. Like the the running game seems to have been, I say, a suffer, uh, and I, well, now it was always going to be a brutal thing. You know, like South Africa, even even in the good old days in the sixties and seventies and eighties or whatever, like South Africa's tactics were exactly the same as they are now. It was just bash it up the middle or whatever and kick it. Yeah. But uh, it's sad that the, all of world rugby has gone down that road. But we hopefully see it turn around with a few rule changes. Maybe I don't know. And is this happening at club level as well, is it? It is, yeah, oh, it's amazing, yeah. yeah. But sure, the amount of people who live in gyms now is phenomenal, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and, and in my day, uh, uh, you know, gee, if you were going to a gym, you were something funny, you know, about mm-hmm. you, you know, you probably, the people thought you'd have an opinion of yourself if, if, if you went to a gym, you know. But they're all, uh, both male and females, uh, you know, it's become, uh, people are become very body conscious or whatever. And uh, so it was an inevitable con- consequence that the physical size of everyone would get bigger, which is the, the dangerous part of it, you know, mm. really. So you enjoyed your sporting life. You had a great sporting life. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. Look, I love sport. Mm. I love watching telly. Well, the one thing, the first lockdown nearly cracked up, right? With no sport <laughs> on the telly or anything like that. Or I, 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 I love sport. I love watching sport. Mm. And, uh, you know, long may it continue. It's, it, it's great. I, I, I must say for kids or for anyone growing up uh, you know sport is, is a fantastic outlet and uh, again in, in the present times team sports are suffering a small bit which i i think you know a lot of people are going for individual sports like cycling and all that whatever so i'm hoping that there'll be a resurgence of team sports because there's nothing like going out and talking out with a team and looking after your mates and, and trying to achieve something as a group of 11 in soccer or 15 in rugby or gaelic it's fabulous you know really well, it's good for all aspects of life, really, in terms of teamwork and yeah. and targets and planning mm-hmm. and all this kind of stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's gas. Just a small thing comes to mind about team sport, but uh, believe it or not, uh, um, my parents are both from Kilkenny, South Kilkenny, a small little village called Ballyhale, mm. and they, they regularly win the, the hurling championships, club championship, you know. So I, I know it's a, a, a funny little small aside, but believe it or not, I have four uncles with all ireland medals so uh, mm-hmm. you know it's gas i came from a hurling background was useless at it absolutely mm-hmm. useless but uh, the, the sporting background was always there mm-hmm. in my background yeah. but you found your niche i found my niche and it definitely wasn't uh, wasn't hurling but i that's i think if you were to ask me what's my favorite sport to watch and I think hurling is so fabulous. Oh, so As a Gaelic game, it's just brilliant. It's so just skillful, brilliant. isn't it? It's so skillful. Fast, skillful. And, and it's one of the ones, you know, you say, oh, okay, I think rugby has possibly disimproved over the years because of the bulk and size, mm. but there's no doubt about it. Hurling has got more watchable uh, in recent years. It's just, you know, and again, you could say Gaelic hasn't, you know, has gone down the hand pass side and the whole lot, but I think that... The, the way hurling has evolved over the years has just been fabulous. You know, yeah. they're just fabulous athletes, you know, really.